there. I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of England. Welcome to my channel and thank you for my subscribers, especially my returning subscribers and new subscribers. I do welcome you. I do realise that the more subscribers I have, the more I'm open to all kinds of criticism and judgment. So I have to take it with a pinch of salt and try not to get too sensitive about it. Anyway, um, I talk about a lot of different subjects and today I wanted to talk about when you are feeling down. Um, what, have you ever really felt as though you're struggling and you want to tell somebody and you kind of say to somebody, look, I'm really struggling here. I don't know how I'm going to cope. And they say, oh, don't worry about it. You know, you'll, tomorrow is another day. As one door shuts, another one opens don't, you know, every this happens to everyone, you'll get through it, you're a strong black woman, or they might say you're a strong black man, but whatever it is, they minimise how you're feeling. And they do mean well. I mean, I think they're trying to be positive. But in their being positive, they're actually dumbing you down and saying, look, don't talk, talk to me about it, you know, sort it out yourself, because that's really what they're saying. Otherwise, they would say, do you want to sit down and talk about it? Do you want to come around? Shall I call you? Shall, you know, shall we meet down the road? Whatever. But they don't do that. The majority of people don't do that because they don't really want you in their space. They don't really want you coming over uh, moaning. They don't really want you to dampen their mood. So they make out like they really want to help. And on the other end of the phone, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, don't worry. Oh, yeah, I know what you're feeling. This thing happened to me the other day. and I know somebody that happened to. And on the other end of the phone, they're rolling their eyes and like, oh, you know, get on with it, all of this. You know, who really cares? And that is why so many people are committing suicide. I've never called the Samaritans, but thank God for them, because that's what they're paid to do. And then imagine that they must get immune to all these cries of, for help. And But I'd like to think that they come over genuine each time, and they genuinely help people to get through their issues and problems. Because... Your John, the regular John Joe, your friends, your relatives, they are not going to be there for you in a lot of the cases. Of course, you have those families who are very, very tight. And even those who are very, very tight, there are some things you can't share. And because you know what your family is like, you're more likely to withhold certain things. So sometimes it's best to talk to a stranger. So, yeah, it's really, really difficult when people think they're helping and you don't feel helped. In fact, you feel worse. You feel isolated. You feel alienated. You feel people don't understand what you're going through. Um, you feel disempowered and you feel as though they're empty words. Um, could be one of the reasons why people commit suicide. They feel as though there's nobody really there for them. And as much as you say, look, I'm here for you. Don't worry about it. You know, British etiquette or the British culture is polite. Oh, how are you? They don't really want to know. They don't really want to know. You know, oh, you know, tell us about your problems. And if you dare start, it's like, oh, well, hold on a minute. I, I've, I, I forgot I've got to make this phone call. Oh, I forgot I've got this meeting to go to. As soon as you start. And that's a lot of, that's the way it is a lot of the time. Unless they're counsellors or unless they, you know, they have a natural um, inclination to listen to people and who really care about what people are saying, they're effective listeners then what you're saying, your story is going to fall on deaf ears. I've got to say I saw one of those flies coming in. Okay, so then you're kind of thinking, well, there are services to help people like them. That's what people say. They've got social services. They've got um, the doctor. They've got, um, what else have they got? Um, Citizens Advice Bureau. Everybody wants to dump it on someone else. But, even those institutions, it's bureaucratic. It's just about record keeping. 
It's not about really caring and really listening and really helping someone through. It's almost like a stopgap. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, um, we've intervened. We can say we intervened and we signposted her or him to somewhere else. Always bloody signposted. Nobody really tackling the problem. So the response is, like I said, I hardly come over. We'll go through this together. Do you want to stay here for a while? And I remember, you know, I've been there. I had a friend and she was going through this trauma with her husband and she just didn't, she said she didn't want to hear the key come through the door. And I said to her, you know, just like how I am, I'm a strong woman. Well, not a strong woman. I think what I am is I self-preservation. I do what I need to do to keep myself safe. And I remember when I left, I just ran away, leaving my home, leaving the furniture, leaving everything I'd worked for because I wanted to escape a relationship. And I, I gave that advice to her, but she wasn't of that. She wasn't like me. She'd had a series of upsets and really serious poor, poor, suffering post-traumatic stress. So she wasn't in the same place as I was. And she said, look, I cannot um, leave this home. I've just spent all my money on this home that I'm living in. I haven't got anywhere else to go. Now, if I'd been thinking, I would have said, you know, do you want to come and spend a few, a few days with me? But that was the last thing I thought about. But that was, if I'd said that, I could have saved her life because she died two days later. So... It, it, it is about listening and genuinely helping somebody who's asking you for help. And yes, they say if you can't help them, sign post them to somebody who can. But make sure that that person is available and is genuinely able to help someone. Especially now, people are struggling. Nobody knows who to turn to. So, yeah, just let's do our little bit. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, a lot of people don't want to take on the responsibility. They'll talk to you on the phone. They don't want to see you in person. They'll say reassuring words, but there's no real effort for support. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to, what is the uh, summary of this? Just a really a time when if people call, especially if they call out of the blue, don't just say, oh, you're all right. Oh, nice to hear from you then. Okay, then um, I'll talk to you. I'm, I'm doing something. Just say to them, is everything okay? Is it, is it really okay? Look, I've got, even if you can say I've got look, 30 minutes, I can sit and listen to you for 30 minutes if you want to talk. You know, 30 minutes might not be enough, but they know that they can talk to you for 30 minutes as opposed to saying, oh, look, I ain't got time thinking in your head. It might take longer. You can actually set your boundaries so it doesn't go over the boundary and you can still be there for that person. And who knows what might come out of it. That's all for now.